There we go. So this starts the official part of the meeting, at least the recordable part. Um, so we are at the end of May, just before the Memorial Day weekend. And we're all, through, all of us are going through the trifecta of some great events that happened recently. We had Cutstown uh, one week earlier, and then we had the Spring Brookline event, which Bob just uh, talked about. And uh, it looks like both events suffered a bit from the weather, although Cutstown is generally always, over, always covered. But for us, we have a combination of indoor and tailgaters, and we certainly probably lost a few tailgaters because of the uh, iffy weather we had. But overall, the gods of vintage electronics were actually pretty good to us because having rain showing up at the last part of the show wasn't so bad because mo a lot of vendors start thinking about cleaning up and closing down shop anyway. So it wasn't, um, fortunately, I don't think it was uh, too, too bad. I think we, we actually dodged a bullet overall. And then on the following day was the flea market at MIT. So there was uh, the, the, the event the next day. So if you wanted your whole weekend consumed by vintage electronics, last weekend, this past weekend was the weekend to do it. So, um, and now we're getting down to just a sort of brief quiet period until June when things ramp up again with uh, some more activity. But um, so uh, at any rate, um, we all are basking in what we may have acquired at one of those two events, or perhaps if you have a sh if you're out of state and had something local to you, you might have come away with something. I know that uh, I know that Greg, you had the uh, the, the Wisconsin Antique Radio Club of in I think there was a show in early May, so you had some something to uh, bring a haul home from, um, mm -hmm. and uh, so we've we've all had our various events, um, but um, so before we sort of the the. Today, this evening, we'll sort of start walking through some of the great photos uh, from Kutztown. And Bob, you'll certainly be add, add some color to them, um, I'm sure. And have anyone maybe have seen Bob's video ahead of time. But um, um, but before we do that, does anyone have any uh, thoughts or additional thoughts or experiences or perhaps even sh show what you brought home from one of these uh, two or uh, shows to uh, to share? Well, I'll just say that the MIT show was very good. Um, not a lot of old radios, but a lot of people and incredible bargains on computer stuff. I bought a couple of Windows 10 uh, machines with terabyte drives in perfect condition for 25 bucks a piece. Wow. Cool. And, uh, you know, you just have one of those as a spare lying around or something like that. It's an unbelievable deal. And people bring weird stuff too. I, I can't think of a, anything specific this time, but it's always fun to work, walk through and see what kind of really strange things show up. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Well, it was actually, and, and we will, uh, in one of the future Zoom meetings, we'll be showing what the photos from uh, Spring Brookline. I haven't even had time to finish editing the photos. I've only started, but I've had a bit of a, heavily distracted by house related nonsense showing up, you know, plumbing problems that should have erupted at the, you know, at an inconvenient time and things like that. So, so I'm a little bit slightly behind by a few days. So I got to pick, pick up the pace and um, get those uh, all sorted out. So you'll see some photos, but there's a lot of, in my view, there was a lot of good stuff there. And there was, there were, there were some good deals to be had. In fact, there was a, I will show eventually the photo. There was a really interesting Telefunken 5650MX that was that Art Bevel Aqua was selling for a very, very reasonable $30. And I I just I want I, I wanted to grab and take it home, but I didn't. And someone else did though. And you'll see the photo. But I I, I actually intentionally made that, you know, because they said, oh, I have to be sort of very choosy these days. And um, but they're they're nice pieces. They're, you know. Teak has a nice panel that covers the face. You'll see that later. But anyway, it, it, there was some neat stuff, and I came up with a, a few items, uh, some record albums, um, some Moody Blue record albums that I were missing in my collection. And uh, um, I did come up with a Panasonic uh, RE7670 um, receiver from like early 70s, 71. It was from Rogers, or you, you know, he was very kind to get in a 
and I took it home from him and they're really neat. I kind of like some of that early Japanese stuff too. They're actually kind of fun. But um, at any rate, yeah, it was a really good show. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, it wish the weather were a little bit better, but there was a lot of great stuff. And I, and you'll see from the photos, um, you know, that there was some good stuff. But um, so with that in mind, did anyone have any other announcements or anything they wanted to show before we sort of start kicking off the, the cuts down uh, walkthrough? Virtual walkthrough. I think I just wanted to make sure that um, Howard donated a radio to the next uh, silent auction, uh, Westinghouse 288. And Bob Harris uh, donated something that I don't really even know what it is. Aquaglide 705 radio direction finder five band. So I'm mm -hmm. reading up on it. Uh, a nautical so that's piece. The, that's going to be the neat one um, for the show. Uh, oh, cool. Castleton. And then we've got a couple of other things, something that I had donated to Bob before uh, he asked me to be silent auction uh, coordinator. So now I got that back, a Sonora. And um, <laughs> there's a couple of other things out there too. Uh, I think uh, Larry has them. Oh, good. So that sounds yeah, promising. We, so so we got five or six things so far. For oh, that's great. And it's still yeah. only May. And, you know, that's. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's promising. Maybe we'll get a few more. Maybe we'll have a really good silent auction for, uh, not right. that we haven't had a good one. The last one I thought was pretty good too. Some nice. The well, last one was good. Yeah, I had really, I had really to be disciplined and not jump at some of these things, but uh, there was some good stuff. But um, great. No, thanks, Ralph. And we appreciate you running that because it's it's yeah. it's a really part of important part of our, uh, our well, kind of show because I do more stuff. You know, I no. get to see different things than what I, uh, sure. I usually just fool around with 30s and 40s radio, so it's different. It's good. Right. So, any other announcements before I? I'm sort of wondering if anybody uh, has gone to or is going to the Mid-Atlantic Radio Club. They always had uh, really, really interesting shows, and I got a flyer from them and looked like it was uh, uh, a pretty good setup. Anybody go down there? It's an awful long trip from Vermont, but uh, Robert, you could get down there. <laughs> well, I, I actually received the email from the club. I, I know a couple of the, 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 the gentlemen in the club, and uh, uh, but it's still pretty, pretty good drive for me, even here in New Jersey. So, uh, nah. <laughs> I think it's, I, isn't it? I'd like to go, but I've, I've got a lot of stuff uh, within two hours of here, so it's now, my house is only so big to throw the stuff in anyway, so I, I don't, you know, it'd be cheaper than a divorce. Let me put it. Uh, <laughs> I, I respect my wife. I love her. I don't want her to, you know, get mad at me. So. I think it was what, in Maryland, right? Somewhere around Baltimore. Yeah, it, it's, it's in Annapolis area. Yeah. Oh, right. That's right. And I think it's their 40th, is it the 40th anniversary? If I remember seeing the flyer. So they have a big event uh, uh, in June timeframe, I think. I um oh, the email that. just went out recently and I, I I looked at it and I said, Oh, I don't think I'll be able to get down there, you know, and also not being very close by, it's gonna be harder to achieve. But uh, it looks appealing. Really, if I wish we were close, I probably would try to at least go in for a day trip. But I, I only went one time a long time ago and, and uh the one time I went I had a great time. Um but they do a nice job. The the, the people that I know that do go, they they really put on a good show over there. Great. Well, hopefully, maybe uh, someone, somebody else, uh, the non, you know, someone not attending this meeting, maybe will go and maybe they'll have some photos or things to show. But, well, I'm uh, sure if someone's watching us on YouTube, will they'll they'll recognize it and want to go anyway. So, right, right, right. All right. Well, then I think it's probably about time to do some screen sharing here. Well, I hope I don't disappoint this time, guys, because I'm just going to lead in while John's getting things ready. Um, as you know, it's usually a two day event and it goes uh, Friday and Saturday. And I only went on Saturday because Friday uh, we were close to a tsunami around here. I mean, it was you know wind driven rain. It was cold. Um, at, I, I'm on my computer at like quarter to four in the morning and there, there was an accident about an hour away from here. 
And it's typically a two hour car drive to, for, for us to get the, my wife and I to get the pets down. I, I just decided not to do it uh, just for uh, safety sake. And the fact that it was cold and wet and, uh, you know, the wind driven rain. And I, I went through, I've been through that uh, dance twice. And I didn't feel like doing it again. So uh, we only went Saturday. Now this picture right here looks like, oh, it's fun, but these are from a gentleman that's a member of the PA club. And he's a great guy, and, and and I didn't get to see him this time around. Somehow I missed him. His name is John Hageman, and uh, he took a lot of great pictures. So you guys you guys are in for a treat. I'm glad because I only did a video that was six minutes long, and I only went Saturday, and I I was just real busy the whole time I was there. So, but uh, this is a really awesome piece of uh, advertising right here. I've never seen this before, but uh, I, just, I just wonder what they were asking for it. Yeah, that's really quite nice. I've never seen that that ad. Certainly, was in beautiful condition too. I'm sure it was an expensive piece of cardboard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. There's a fellow that comes to uh, uh, not Brookline, Castleton, that has all kinds of stuff. From I think yeah. he comes from New York, and he has all kinds of nice stuff like this, including neons. But they're pricey. Right. Yeah, there was. I think I know what you're talking about Castle and Ralph. There was he was uh, towards he was along the windows, I think. On the windows, yeah. yeah. He had real nice stuff. Yeah, I got some good photos of his stuff. He has some neat like Dumont uh, uh yeah. neon sign, nice, really nice neon sign, some other stuff. He had a he had a quite an eclectic uh set of things for sale that were really interesting not just junk they're really just a wide variety of no no it was like, I, I looked at his truck because i know i'm pretty sure he came from new york it was like where's this guy coming from with all this stuff it yeah, was I, like he yeah, comes he's a to regular me. he's a regular at cuts town uh you might see him in the, in some of these pictures somewhere um i forget his name hmm. I, w I wish i knew who you were talking about but unfortunately it's not it's not ringing a bell right now so it's uh I would like to know though what that Bakelite box speaker is down to the lower left of the picture. I just, yeah. I actually tried to grow that in my, my machine. Almost. I couldn't figure out what that was. It's funny. It looks more European than American, but I can't really be sure. It almost looks like a piece of like one of those uh, German radios, you know, something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. That's let's see. I tried to expand it, see if I can get a closer. See, look at that. And I look at that dial. That speaks to me. Oh, see, the tag is, is in it there. A tag? It tells me that I think this looks more European, like German to me. But I can't. The symbol is unclear. But I'm willing to bet you this is probably European. Does the tag? Well, you don't. There's not enough on the tag. Yeah, unfortunately, I see one line right here, and that's it. Yeah. So it's kind of. Yeah, John, John didn't get enough in that picture. Matter, matter of fact, if you look toward the, the outside there, um, where you see the portage on all the way to the upper right, my, my, oh, table, yeah. my, my two tables that are empty, that's that's where I usually vend right there. So, and there's oh, okay. coming out of portage on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you, you can with, see with a relieved look. With a relieved look on your face, yeah. <laughs> Well, is it now? Is that a vintage? Is that is that a vintage Porter John? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you know, but uh, okay. Now look at this. Now we got some. Now we got Ooh. good stuff. Look at all this stuff. Um, I'm gonna. So I'll, it's, 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 it's I'll, my neighbor John's table right here. That, that's the guy across the way from me. Look at that silver, silver tongue. Silver tongue. Right? Look at that. Yeah, that's seven hundred dollar price tag on it. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Look at the wood. It's I always love silver tone dial faces. They're always very attractive. The the fellow who runs that stand is a retired New York City cop. And he's kind of a bit gruff, but he's really kind of a nice guy. And uh I'm sure he would negotiate with you for a better number if you if you wanted to do better on some of that stuff. I also know that that a lot of the radios that he had this time around and I think in the fall last year, he had bought someone's collection. And uh, I don't know where he has the room to store this stuff, to be honest with you. I don't go there, but he had some really cool stuff there. 
Yeah, let's see what we got here. This is a RCA Victor. $600. Well, you're $100 less. Well, I guess when it's paying that much, I'll take the silver tone. I, really I, like I think those That's are left over nice from that collection from last year. They, all those radios were restored to a pretty good degree. Oh, is this? The woodwork is beautiful. Yeah. You know, especially the silver tone. It's just beautiful design. The different different uh, colors and contrasts of the wood. It's just wow. That's a real eye catcher. Let's see what we got here. A Hickok tube tester. Wow, look at that. I've never seen quite one like that looks that way. I can't can't really see the model number too well though either. Yeah, unfortunately not. There's another one adjacent here. A precision. There we go. Tube merit. Precision. But some um, nice zenith right here. That's it's, that's a fairly fairly common radio. You see, it looks like two hundred dollars if I read that correctly, or is that? I hope that's two. Um, yes. Emerson next. True, is that a true tone? What is that over here? No, it's Emerson. I think that's an Emerson. Emerson. Yeah. yeah. And then another tester of some sort. I had an Emerson like that. That's a weird radio to take apart because the cabinet comes apart in half. Really? It's one of those, bot one of those bottom loading uh, chassis. Ah. Oh, interesting. Bold the, the front half of the, ca or the cabinet will come off, actually. And the back half will come off. And there's just a horseshoe in the middle. So it's like a three piece cabinet. Huh. How unusual. Oh, yeah, I can see where it splits off in the front there, Greg. I, I can't yeah. really make it. Oh, there, there's the split on the top, like you're saying. Exactly. And in the back, it's the same way. Wow. Because I had a Plascon one like that. It was white and uh, same way. So you, you get the joy of repairing the radio and bringing it back to life and do a jigsaw puzzle simultaneously. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. The two for one radio. <laughs> And of course, one of the uh, lamp uh, table lamp radios is, is this that John um, um, Bob? Who whose table is this? Do you I know? forget his last name. Is it Huffnagel or Huff? Yeah, some yeah it begins with an H. Yeah, like that. he's he came to our um, he came to our show in um, I think last uh, fall Brookline. Beautiful mm -hmm. stuff. The reason is he had one of those. I remember it was there. You don't see these all that often. And he does really nice work, woodwork. And it's possible, come to think, as I think back, that's this silver tone might have been at our show. I might have taken a photo of it. It's yeah, starting it to come back to me. So, yeah. so I think that's, I think we're thinking one and the same person. Ooh. Ooh, there we go. And Excelsior, is Excelsior? Is that one of those Russian ones? That's the Russian one. Yes. That's the Fiesta. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's Russian. What's the Russian price on that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's in rubles. Yeah. I think that says five fifty. Yeah, five fifty. dollars 50 rubles actually be a really good deal. <laughs> yeah. It'd be even better if it was in lira. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some neat stuff back there. Oh yeah, this the Lada. Lada. Oh, this, yeah, this is the money table right here. Look at all these Catlins. I was gonna yeah, say, look at the box too. Wow. And, and look at that Fada box. Oh, how nice. Wow. What is this? A what is say? Does that say oh tomboy? Is that say tomboy or I think it says tomboy? Yeah. I've never seen a tomboy before. Well. Wow. Cute little lunchbox style radio. I'm not sure what this is, but this is. This looks like one of those ones that uh, that Bruce Phillips has on his. Uh, I think that's a Motorola. Yes, oh, yeah. I think you're right. I think yep, I see Motorola good. here. Yeah. Some cool stuff here. Very nice stuff. Yeah. Now we're losing a little bit of resolution, so. You know, zooming in in the back doesn't really help matters. Well, John John Hageman, the guy that took these photos, I've seen some of his camera equipment. 
and it puts it puts my uh, YouTube video camera to shame. He's got some really good good stuff, and he knows how to use it. Yeah, that's really strange. Got that's a, a yeah, it. that's really unusual. The style face is just what is this? A core? A, a, is that oh, say Corona? That's a Corona. Corona. Well, I know I have a Corona has that same uh, uh, symbol in the middle of the dial. Oh, really? So, so I'm like had a picture of a micrometer there. See, I'm just trying to sort of sort out. This says it looks like is that say cord? Right here at the bottom, you know where my. Yeah, that looks like cord on the bottom. Yeah. Looks like there's some word above it though. Oh, oh, all right. Let me try. Oh, I wasn't sure that was a reflection. That's part of the bezel. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I've never seen the one like this. It's beautiful. Yeah. You know, with a sort of a fish tank looking attempt there with the fish here. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. I'd want to bring that home. I'd go out somewhere and then my cats would be trying to turn it on and tune it in with the fish on there. Yeah. <laughs> this is really unusual. Yeah. It looks to be a U.S. because that's the police band markings and so forth. So it kind of makes you think it's a U.S. radio. That's super rare. I've never seen one of these. These can't be, you know. Oh. I really like it too. It reminds me a little bit of the the spark. John, 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 when he takes his photos, he he usually tries to find the really unique and kind of things you don't see all the time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, he did a good job. He's good at what he does. I, yeah. uh, he's, he's just a great guy. I once had a Climax set with a very similar dial. And the pattern on the escutcheon, the bezel there, was the same, except it was brown Bakelite, whereas that looks like it's chromed. Um, mm -hmm. Very similar dial. Huh. Real mystery. I'd love to see the back panel on this. Wow. Wonderful radio. I love it. Yeah, I think you're right about that emblem on the front, that that's kind of a reflection in the mirror. I think it just says cord and whatever it was, looks like it's above it is just actually a reflection in the mirror. Yeah, yeah that's a screw. Yeah, real mystery. But we all like it. And yeah. We all want it. But, uh, ah, here's another look at, a, uh, at the Fada up, cl Fada's up close. Uh, here's an RC Victor, twelve hundred dollars. Shows what Catalin can get you. Yeah. The red and white one. Addison, ooh, that's nice. Eight fifty. That's attractive. I like the way that looks. It's an attractive yeah. radio. Love it. Nice stuff. Hi, right, here's an interesting fada. Yeah, it's an early one. It's supposed to be from like you know, the twenties, you know, early twenties, early thirties. I love it. Yeah, really attractive. Mm -hmm. Station selector. I guess that's a station selector there. And I guess that's a band selector in meters. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, okay. That's a guess. I don't know. It uh, almost looks like it's a leatherette cabinet or something. Yeah. Yeah, it does. At least in the front. Yeah. The side looks more like, I suppose, like wood, painted wood. Yeah. I see some drips in the. Oh, no, that's good. That's the speaker, the vents. I thought it was drips. Um, <laughs> it's cool. I like it. I've never seen one before. No price tag on that one. No. Up on the very oh, is there something up stock? Oh yeah, let's see if I can see if we can read from the back. Oh, I'm trying. To... Uh, it's facing the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, uh, you see Fada right here. On the left at the bottom, you know, three lines down. What's that? Well, it looks like twenty-three. Two, three, three. Would that be a? Model number? Yeah, maybe. I know this is an eight. It's hard to say. 
It's, it's a beautiful really, radio. Um, there's a great, somebody shared, and I forgot who it was. It was Paul Burish, but somebody shared a, uh, a, a link to, um, to uh, this vintage radio site where I had this great sub page on FADA history. So this pop song goes show I was because I was really fascinated because I was kind of wanting to read a little bit about it because I have I have a relatively you know compared to this a relatively newer one I have a uh, a Fada model seven ninety which I really like and that's you know nineteen forty eight but you know they had factories mine was made in New Jersey but they actually had a, a site in um, in I think Woodside New York which is where my dad's Long Island from. City oh, it was a Long, Long Island City. City. Because I thought there was a Woodside, because I would sort of raise my antennas. I could swear I saw it. Well, it's close to Woodside. It's it's you know. actually Queens over there. Yeah, it is, because that's my dad's side is from, and um, been there a number of times. But um, but I found it interesting that they had a presence in that general area. It's a, I just looked it up. So it's a 1933 Century Model 105. Oh, oh okay. Century uh, World of Progress. Yeah, the World's Fair. No, no. Well, that must be with those numbers we saw. It must be 1933 or something. Sure. Let's see if I can look, find that, and see the look at that again. Maybe that's what it says. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Hard to say. Model 105. No, nope. doesn't say it. Doesn't give a price on this FADA website, but. No, that's really nice. Yeah. Okay, I guess some here's some unique pieces here, guys. That's a Fairbanks Morse. Ah, thank you, Howard. Lots of presets on that one. Yeah, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was at eight, three. Yeah, eight presets. Nice yeah. radio. It's a it's a good size radio. And. Uh, Morse, I think. The Trolla over here. Yeah, the other one's at Emerson, I think. The one behind this? Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah, you are. You, you are 100% correct there. That's a nice looking radio. I've never seen one of these either. Oh, a nice inlay on there. Yeah, isn't it? Beautiful radio. The troll is even interesting with this sort of clock in the center and. Um, yeah. I, see, I don't know whether that's electric or a wind up. It's hard to say without looking at the back. You never know. The Germans ran a, a, a mechanical clock that was that would still control the electronics. So anything is possible. No, oh, look at that zenith. Ooh. Like a 6S. Uh... Mm. I've got the council version of that. I'm trying to think what the model number is. What an attractive slide, slatted um, speaker grill. Yeah. Very, very elegant. It's a oh, six and that's one. sitting underneath the, uh, the <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, John, what's, what's that book-looking thing to the left of the dial of the zenith? This um, here. The poly oscillator. Okay. This side must be up. Poly portable photograph. Uh, uh, huh. New York, New York. Another mystery. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Thank yeah, you. no, it's it's we're always it's fun to poke around because it's you never know what you're gonna find here. So various radio paraphernalia. Philco, something Philco. Oh, another look at the uh, cord from a different angle. We're not, we're unfortunately no more. All right, so what we got here? Ah, I believe it's, this is uh, that's an Emerson. Emerson. That's an Emerson. Bob yeah, I think one of those. Nuts. That one, one, I think. That's interesting. I don't know what this is, but it looks like 
has a pore spout. I mean, it's, it's like if you're rubbing a genie, is going to come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a really fancy teapot, but it, look at this thing. It's quite elaborate. Does it look a little bit like a cow's head? Yeah, you know, like, like it, it does. It's like a, it's like a big it, creamer that you use for coffee or something. Yeah, it, it does. But if, but it looks like it's almost on a stand of sorts, like as if it's there's a warmer underneath it or something. Oh, yeah. That's kind of bizarre. Yeah, it's you know it does look, kind of look like maybe it's right in the middle of a moo. <laughs> <laughs> moo. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's you find out some neat stuff here, huh? There's a tester generator. Oh, we got over here, boy. It's hard to tell what this is. Anyone guess? G E. Yep. Tom. G -E. Sorry. Uh, that's a G E. Oh, thank you, Howard. And some sort of transistor radio on its side. We can't really see very well. And this must be, I think it's Zenith, is it not? That's, yes. Yep. Well, that's kind of interesting with a dial, with a magic eye. What is that? Interesting dial face, too. I think it might be a that's, Spartan. That's a Spartan. Is it a Spartan? Yep. Nice. I like it. Attractive looking piece. I've never seen one of those either. Oh, a closer look. Okay, this is a better shot of this. Same. Oh, yeah. Great call, guys. Very attractive dial face. Look at that. Boy, that's quite elegant. It's a beautiful radio. Actually, so is this... Uh, Another Emerson. Emerson there, yeah. Actually, attractive enough radio with the red stripes. Quite elegant. Oh, this is Ingram cabinet. Mm, I'm not sure what we got here. Is that? Is that, is that I think that's a, RCA. Is it? Yeah. I think. Yeah, look at the nice banding. I mean, some really nice woodwork on these these, these pieces. I wonder what that military thing is, though. Maybe you can get a close up on that the tag. Frequency that's meter. Signal. Oh, frequency meter. Those actually make nice more. signal generators. Oh, really? Hmm. Good stuff. Ah, oh, look at this. Oh, now we're getting some neat stuff. Look at that TB. The old porthole zenith. I like it. Wow, that's nice. Roundy tube. Oh, the side is that a little green indicator light that it's on? Yeah. My grandmother had one of them when I was a kid. So Philco, well, look at that. Very nice. Admiral, yes, I've seen those are those are actually rather attractive radios. We I've seen a couple of these have photos that were really nice condition, nice looking radio. Let's serve behind. Look at that. Wow. I'm not sure if I recognize this script. It seems European to me, but I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, because I can't read this. I can't make it out. Yeah. Almost looks like it says Columbia, but I'm not sure. That well, is. You know, that, oh, that might be it. That's it. Give the man a cigar. I'm I'm going to go there. See well. Yeah, I am. I, yeah, I think it's a Columbia, two hundred, or maybe that says two hundred, three hundred. Maybe it's well, I used to have a Columbia three hundred bowling ball, so that might be the two hundred yeah. record player. Actually, well, hold on a second. That might be a calif. Uh, no, not a caliphone, but if you look at it, what it is, is it's one of those things they had in the classroom for playing records. It's a, oh, actually, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. you see the lid is popped up. In oh, back. right. Yes, 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 yes. Record player. Yep. And there used to be a company called Caliphone, C-A-L-I-F-O-N-E, but that doesn't look, it, it does look more like Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, well, and Columbia, though, might have made, you know, they might have made something like that, Howard. Yeah. But yes, I, you are, I'm with you there in terms of it, what it is overall. Yep. 
And I just realized that that Wurlitzer is not a big thing behind the Philco, but a little thing on the tabletop behind yeah, it. Right. It's a knockoff, I guess, or? <laughs> it's a nostalgia thing. It's a, it's a uh, mini, mini Wurlitzer, Wurlitzer. Mini jukebox. Yes. Yeah, hopefully it'll be better for us. a nice little, I can play over there. I'm not sure what this is way in the distance. It's a little bit hard to is tell. Philco? Oh, Philco? Yeah, oh, thanks. thanks, Greg. Oh, some interesting stuff. A microscope. How's it? Some neat, neat apparatuses here. That's a good look. That's a fairly old looking microscope. That's an early one because it's all right. brass. Yeah. Look at the early camera, the the bladder style. Wow, look at this. It's quite the it's pretty cool. And a Philco. Wow, look at this thing. What this is very that, unusual. That looks homebrew to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you may be onto something there because it's a bit Frankensteinish. What the heck is? That's for surveying. Yeah, I you know I was just thinking that. I agree, Howard. I think that makes sense. Some sort of player. Whoop. A sterling tester for AC and DC tubes. Well, there you go. Pretty basic. Hmm. Huh. Well, here we go. Now look at that very attractive radio. A nice silver tone, yeah. Ooh, I yeah. like that one a lot. Wow, that's nice. Four hundred dollars. No, you know. Yeah. It it is rather sought after. Yeah, so I, I think that's that right? a high tube count radio. That's probably at least eight tubes in that thing. Ooh, it's gorgeous. I love the dial face on this. That's they, nice. they always made beautiful radios. I was at the Johnny Cash Museum last year and he listened to a silver tone. Oh, did he? That's what he had at his house. They didn't have the exact model, though. Oh, okay. But this is like unusual. Any yeah. 150 for it? Whatever any, it is. I guess so, yeah, because I can't recognize the dial face on this. It's unusual with the sort of center icon. I have no idea what that is. Here, even here, it's a little bit unclear what what radio. That's an airline. Oh, the thank one you. On the right, the I one said on the it's right a movie dial. Of, the one to the left of it is either a Clinton or an Empire. Um, Ooh. I'll get more into that someday. Hmm. That's interesting. Thank you, Howard, because I had no idea. I had no idea. I've never seen that dial face before. This is kind of interesting. So it's an, it's, I guess it's an AM, FM. It's an AM, FM. It's just something I've never seen. You know, it's, it's, it's Panasonic. AM, FM, and sure wave. Oh, yeah. I've never seen one of these Panasonics like this. This is what kind of caught me. I'm like, huh. Interesting. It's not your typical looking boom box. This is what kind of, I guess maybe that's its box, an RF 3100. Huh. It's kind of neat. Like he's having some Pringles back there. Yeah, yeah, vintage. I mean, was that from the seventies? You think? Vintage Pringles curtain. Yeah. I see cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you got at least two of your basic food groups right there. there Vitam yeah, well, that's fight. You know, you're getting your vitamin C. C's you have your sugar C's. group and your salt group. Maybe, you know, <laughs> yeah. C for cookies, C for chips, vitamin C. Get that A one C up there. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Nothing escapes this group. <laughs> look at all the microphones. Another money table here. Yeah. Oh, look at all these things. Ooh. 
some neat pieces here. And some of the uh, NBC, WKOP. Yeah, some beautiful. If you, don't, if you don't have a 401k or some kind of savings plan, get a bunch of microphones. Yeah. <laughs> It'll do okay. Yeah, I bet. Oh, wait in the distance. That is a, I believe that is a Grundig. Yes, it definitely is. Ooh, Spartan. Now that's nice. We all like that's, the... that's not that's not the repop. That's the real deal right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the real deal. The sled. That's pretty. That's the one that's probably on everybody's bucket list if they win the lottery. Yep. Yeah. Well, George uh, Kawasaki, I think, was advertising one in our spot meet about three or four weeks ago. He's got one. Oh, the email. Hopefully, I pronounced this last time correctly. Ah, another view of the look at all those radios plus well, the microphones, but all the different uh, mic toppers. Yeah. Wow, these stuff. I won't pan in because we've seen it. Haven't seen these. We'll just. Uh, of the next photo. Ah. Ben Roos clock, Ben Roos matches. Watches. I mean watches. <sighs> Am I getting dyslexic here? Um neat. Oh, this is interesting. Anders. Edison Bell. Edison Bell? Yeah. Wow. Let's see if it's, yeah, nor have I. And I've never, I don't see a price tag, or I can't see the price tag to tell how much they're commanding. But that's what, what a very interesting looking radio. Very attractive. Presumably like early, early ish 30s. I like the looks of that horn speaker, though, too. That's pretty cool looking. Yeah, huh? Yeah. It's not a fada. Is that an Emerson over here? Hard to tell. It's hard to say. Probably on the next picture. Oh, yeah. A couple of nice zeniths. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That one's very, I went and get close to that dog. I was, ooh, that is a very, white bell. That's an early one there. That's a good look. I love that chrome grill. Hmm. And look at the, the and the uh, shadow it's meter. Just, that's just gorgeous. Yeah. That is gorgeous. I'd take either one of these, but I want both. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one on the right is a 10 tuber. Is that right? I think it's a 10S, yeah. That's nice. 1837. Wow, it's hard, boy. These be tough to to, to pick. I'm really ca I'm captivated by the 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 elegance of the one on the left, but that right one looks great too. Up because the, the one on the right has has the target tuning eye, they call it. It was like a shadow meter, but it was a bullseye instead. It was a, oh. they had that in 37 before the eye tube came out in 38. Ah, you can just see it on the top of the dial there. Yeah, right up here. The bullseye. Yeah, I see it right there. That's cool. That's a beautiful radio. Yeah. Hmm. What do we got here? What's? Did I say Motor? That say? That's Motorola. I was gonna say I thought it was gonna Motorola, but I wasn't sure. Hard to. Interesting radio. That's an AK-20 on top there. Ah, uh, yes. Bag. Oh, sure. I have ONA battery set. I just bought one for myself. I just haven't always wanted one. I just have to kind of redo the cabinet. It's got a lot of scratches on it. That was okay. a Crosley 51. No. Our, um, which you'll see when we get to showing those photos, we had um, as part of our radio contest we had uh, Crosley was one of the themes so some neat Crosleys I'll be uh, 
uh, that there was some really strong entrance that um, people get to see when I show the photos from Brookline. Hmm. Not sure what this sure what is. That is. I'm not sure. I don't see a label anywhere for me to give me a clue, or it's hidden by the by the lid yeah, of the uh, Crosley. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, here we go. Another silver tone. Ah, I was gonna say I thought that was silver tone. It just screams it. Oh, what another attractive dial face. That's in the discussion, which is an uncommon. Yeah. Thing. It's only it's one kinda... downside. Everything else looks nice. Even the knobs look about right, and has the S on the silver tone, so they're mm -hmm. mostly mostly all there. Just need the uh, discussion. Other two are Philco's. Yeah, so they are. Yes, yes. Nice radios. Yeah. And it looks like a, a GE Super Z is a Super uh, Radio. That, yeah. That's the third gen Super Radio. Now I forget of those gens, which is the most desirable of those those gens. I would say number two. Number, that's that's the one remember. that had the two speaker. Good to know. Beef the, threes, the threes were kind of mediocre. The ones and twos are really the, the nicer ones. Got it. You see some old old sets here. Just from the lower lower right, but some neat stuff. Old, old speakers here. What do we have here? Wow, there's a lot of chrome, a lot of mirror in there. That's intriguing. What do we got here? I can't see a 375. That I can see. Uh -huh. Oh, so this, yeah, this is a mirror, so it's reflecting what we're seeing here. How cool. There is a label there, but I can't, I cannot read it. Quite, quite unusual. Oh, that's a Spartan. Is, is, is that? I wonder if that's just the same. Oh, maybe it's a different radio. Wow, look how beautiful that is. But look at that woodwork. Wow, that's a real wow radio. Makes a real statement. It's in color coded. I don't know band selectors. I guess. Yeah, I would think so. I guess these sort of color match somewhere along the way here, which you're selecting. Wow, that's terrific. I don't know if you can price on that. I'm sure there's a gulp in that. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Another Emerson Cadillac. Yeah. It's hard to say what this is. Anyone? Is that a Phil? No, it's not a, it's not a Foco. No, I don't think it is. Might be a Grunel. Tom? I said it might be a Grunel. Oh, okay. Oh, look at here. Wow. A lot of Philco's. Yeah, look at them. Wow. Pick your color Philco. 120 bucks. Not, not actually ridiculous. Got all the colors. I guess that's blue. White, the green, the dark green, yeah, those, nice. Those are those are a nightmare to work on. A little five tube chassis crammed all together. Oh, all yeah. the wiring, all the wiring is a crumbling wire in there. Ah, uh, that's all rubber wire uh, inside. It, yeah, yeah, they're all oh, from I think nineteen thirty nine. They're a little compact transitone, but Loctal tubes. You got all that good stuff. Speakers, lots of speakers. 
That guy standing there is Jay Volke. He's from uh, Wisconsin here. Oh, is that right? He comes to our meets, and he drove all the way out to Pennsylvania for that. Ah, wow, that's a that's a bit of a hike. Yeah, yeah. That's all his stuff. This is a sort of interesting radio. Not sure what it is though. I think that's an American Bosch. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, Howard. Yeah, not a hundred percent sure, but pretty sure that's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, odds are you're probably spot on. He's our go-to knob guy. He's got a oh, is that right? collection of knobs. Yeah. That's lots of good stuff here. Oh, I think it's a continuation. Yes, this is a continuation. As we get to maybe get a little closer, we'll go to the Zenith Zephyr. Yeah, that's nice. Is this, uh, is this an Emerson? My... I believe so. I think so. Oh, look at that. Philco, Re ah, Philco refrigerator. Ooh, that's a nice clock. I'm not sure who makes it, but it's a neat neon clock of some sort. Ah, oh, Hablon yeah. Cassidy. RCA. Classic old fans. There's nothing finer than Schrottenberg Carlson. All right. Amplion. Amplion Dragon. All right, good stuff. Oh, now we got to head on. I don't know who make that, who what this clock's about, but it's cool. Ah, here we go. Nice old. Is that a Westinghouse fan? Yeah, Westinghouse Electric. And behind it, hmm, probably a Grundig. I would say quite likely a Grundig. I can remember the model though. Well, there we go. Some nice smaller sets. A couple of Zeniths. Now we got the Zenith. Emerson here. Hmm, that's an interesting one. Any Fada. guess, guy? Sorry? Fada, I think. Is that? How interesting. I've never seen that before. That's actually a rather interesting looking radio. Yeah, because I had a Fada with that kind of dial on it. Right yeah, it's an issue. Yeah, it's a neat radio. Now the Zenith, I'm sure see, they, they seem to be pretty popular, these Zeniths. Yeah. So you see them fairly. And a Crosley. Oh, oh is that an airline? Airline, yeah. Yeah. I think that was was it one of the other meets because we talked about how that one had the white uh, knobs and push buttons and most of them are all the same uh, color. There was one at our um, our last you know our uh, Castleton event and I was wondering if it was the same guy because he was it was I wonder if he went out to cut stuff because that looks awfully familiar. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that and I'm wondering whether one of these two radios in the middle middle shelf. Were there too, so it's very possible that this is a. Uh... Hey John, I think you're right. I think that was on John Huffnagel's table. Oh really? I I think so. If, I mean, if you feel ambitious, you can go back and look at your pictures from the fall. But I'm pretty sure that was his stuff. Oh, that could be. You could be right, Howard. Good stuff. Yeah. Oh, look at that Atwater Kent radio lamp. The lampshade? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I like it. And what do we got there? I'm not sure if I can quite make that out. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know. No, they were ringing a bell. <laughs> no. And of course, they're off in an off angle. It's a little bit hard to see. There's an Arvin. Yeah, I thought that was an Arvin. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Airline next to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Some neat lamp. Neat old lamps too. Wow. Very good. Very nice. You really have to go to an antique show actually when you go to Cutstown. I mean, an antique shop because they have it all. Is that a national? No, Collins. Ah. Colin Gary. This guy was a ham. I was talking to him and he had nothing but a bunch of like you know, old, bu I call them old buzzer tube, you know, ham radios. It's just, uh, just, just crazy in the amount of stuff he had. The, like those two MFJ Versa tuners that are on the left there, those things are, well, first of all, MFJ just went out of business. They're not selling anymore. But those three KW tuners he wanted $125 for each. And that's probably a really good number because if you want to run, like if you want to run a couple hundred uh, watts on AM, you want one of them tuners. Yeah. If you need one, or either that or use like a Johnson Matchbox or something like that. The only bad thing is they just take up a lot of space and they're heavy. Got it. Let's see here. So I'm getting... they were, but this guy's stuff was all nice, though. It was all really good shape and all turnkey and ready to play. Yeah, it looks in great condition. Ah, oh, wow, look at all these record players. Wow, yeah. graphics. Wow, is that Lone Ranger? <laughs> wow, it looks like it. That's oh, they, they had all kinds of what they had Lone Ranger, they had the uh, the uh, what was the name of the quintuplets from oh, the Deion quintuplets, yeah. They had like a bunch of different ones. They had uh, they had Disney one, sure. they had uh, I'm trying to remember. They had a bunch of different different variations of that with that 45 EY series uh standalone 45 changer. Yeah, I didn't I've never seen the um, Lone Ranger version. It's really quite nice. There's two of them here. Oh, another Zenith. Oh. Now that right next to the Zenith is a Bing Crosby Jr. Jute box. Yes. <laughs> I actually know someone that bought one of them things. I have one myself. Do you really? Sure. Oh, suddenly it's not. That's weird. Why is it being. From 1948. Oh. There we go. It was. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it lights up and flashes. And oh yeah. <laughs> what year? What year would you say, Greg? It was nineteen forty-eight. It came out. Wow, that is nice. Look at all the graphics and all. This is nice zenith. Yeah. Must be a seven there. seven tuber because it doesn't have the uh, motorized tuning. All right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, so so quite nice. Actually, I, I I hope I'm not giving this away, but I I heard through the grapevine through the uh, Delaware Valley Club, I think they bought that radio. The club did, and that's going to be the spring giveaway radio. I think someone had a couple people had mentioned that they had bought a uh, a Waltons as a giveaway radio for the they're they're going to have a raffle. I, I figure what it is, like a couple bucks a piece for a raffle. That'll be the raffle radio. That radio is restored. Oh, okay. If that's the radio. Well, it looks to be in terrific condition, so. So. Rather nice raffle radio. If you don't have one of these, it's, it's a great radio. And if you notice in the background, boys, the Twin Towers. 
Oh, there's yes. Bob again. <laughs> Okay, let's see. We got some speakers. What have we got here? This is actually an interesting one. Wow. Echo Radio. Is that British? I want to say this is a British radio. I believe so. Mm -hmm. Yes, see, I remember these are these are these are kind of cool. They're certainly unusual. I really like the kind of. Yeah. I like with the dial face on the outer ring and the speaker on the yeah, it looks like a wide white wall tire. I was thinking the same thing, Greg. There's some nice speakers back there. We're now a radio and now let's see, what do we got? Are these some crosses? Uh, those are Jackson Bell, I think. Oh, That's thanks. I love the, the the sort of the unusual grill work. Is that small but I'm really... in here? Yeah, I'm really curious though about the one in the lower left corner there. That that if that's a Bakelite speaker or what? Mm. That's really interesting. That I don't know what it is. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Oh, there is something. Is that some sort of script? I can't see it, or is it just a smudge that looks like it? Maybe a smudge. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's it's hard to see anything. Yeah. This looks European. Is this a, is this a, this isn't a B and O, is it? Or maybe it's, maybe it's a uh, Phillips. This I think is your Euro set. Pretty sure it's a European set. Oh, here's interesting. I don't know what that is. A little that might be another airline. Airline, you think? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. You may be right. Oh, well, well, lots of good toys here. A Grenau. It's actually attractive looking. 125 That's not a bad price on that. No, I guess not. It's in pretty nice shape, too. What do we got here? It's Emerson? 50 bucks? No, 250 No, 250 I guess Well, I how's that for inflation? Yeah. yeah. As I say, but I can't be right. Must be one of those rep wood cabinets. Maybe. Spartan behind it. Oh. There we go. Ah, that's a um, silver tone. Yeah, the candy cane. Original box. Wow. Oh, yeah, I like oh. that. Love boxes. Oh, that's so nice. Hmm. That might Try. be a general. Oh. General. What does that say there? It has some sort of something written below there. General television. Yes. Ah. That's what it is. Ah, the piano. Uh, um. I think that's the same brand general television made those, too. Oh, is that right? I believe so, yeah. That black thing in the middle of this Emerson, I believe. Okay, that seems right. Cool stuff. And a micro microscope here. That's more of your classic standard one. Still fairly old, though. I remember having that 85 and 1 electronics kit when I was a kid. Oh, how fun. <laughs> 1,001 electronic projects. Yeah, really? they had those little little spring clips, and you can make the connections by picking up the spring and sticking the wire in there. Oh, okay. Kind of a quick change uh, to make the circuits. Okay, a bunch of people hovering around. Stop. Let's see the free table. Oh yeah, that probably that that feels. <laughs> they have a free they have a free that, table there, Bob. No, that, 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 that's not a free table. No, I'm going to say, wow, that's a heck of a free table. I would say, yeah. Some sort of mixer over here. Looks like a studio mixer or something. Sure. Yep. I think John took these pictures on Thursday. 
So it, that's why it's not pouring rain uh, you know, inside and all that. So these are just the vendors setting up. And it's kind of funny because the vendors are selling stuff to the other vendors. And it's, yeah. it's just kind of funny. TV. Oh, another porthole TV. Yeah. Zenith, yes, indeed. I and think that was the one my grandma had. That's nice. What's up on top here? What the heck is that? 225, whatever 225, it is. whatever it is. I can't read the, the label. It's too far from, too, a little too challenging for my eyes. It, look, it looks crude, whatever it is. Yeah. I even probably know probably obscure like a milk pasteurizer or something. Yeah, maybe. And what we got down here? Right? IBM Selectric. Wow. Free to good home. Oh, wow. Free. Assuming it works. I remember using one. The first time I used one, I said, wow. Now, this is a typewriter. After using a mechanical one, now this yeah. is the way to go. Ooh, another Spartan. I don't know. Ooh, the number Do I see own. four figures? I think I did. 35, right. 20, 35, 75 or 20? Yes, 35, 75. Woo-wee. Yeah. That's nice. So look at that. This is a really nice example. It looks to be in terrific condition. Yeah, a lot of times on those, the mirrors get kind of funny. Yeah. To... This one looks, I mean, it's hard to see from the, all the reflections, but it looks to be yeah, that's in good. terrific condition. I not mind this on my mantle. Ah, so you're Charlie McCarthy. Charlie, Charlie McCarthy, McCarthy, majestic. Yeah. That's yes, there it is. You know, these novelty radios are always fun. The horse radio is a Emerson over there. So nice looking Emerson. I'm sure it makes it. Oh, well, yeah. And this is what? Belmont, maybe? I forget. Oh, Belmont. Yeah. Belmont or Coronado. Yeah. Right. Or Coronado. That's right. Coronado made them too. Rosley in the front there. Rosley, yeah. We had the same radio in the Rikosa contest, but in that nice kind of aqua green, sort of more of a gray green almost. It had a bunch of different colors no. for them there. There's a national and a, and a Halicrafter speaker on top. Yes, indeed. I work, work you don't see that often. No, that's nice. That's a good looking radio. Yes, it is. Good, very good looking radio. Look at all the inside. All beautiful work. Gosh. So it's the tree just looking at the cabinetry. Forget about what's inside. Ah, what do we got there? Emerson. Uh, what was that thing? Well, right look at the, that's an unusual ray. Look at those push buttons for the stations. Yeah. Wow, that is cool. Very, very attractive. I've never seen one done that way. Wish I could remember the brand on it. <laughs> this is Emerson's D2. That one with the push buttons could be a Coronado or even an airline. I mean, they, they yeah. made. They did those with the the knob on the right to set the push buttons. You unscrew the screw in the middle of that knob on the right. Okay. Right. You then you push the button in that you wanted. Then you tighten the screw as you held it there. Interesting. Mm hmm. Neat radio though. That's a Zenith. Yeah. Yeah, you frequently see those. 
Stromberg Carlson. Yeah, I was going to say it's Stromberg, yeah. The classic. Stop sign type dial. Exactly. Or MG. A spark in champagne. That must be obviously a champ a bottle radio. It's a novelty radio. That's that's cool. Who makes this? Nice RCA, guy. is that right? RCA? That color yep. doesn't look that color looks a little Yeah, it's uh, some, someone painted that color there. Yeah, that looks a little uh modern. That's that's like automotive grade paint that's on that radio. Actually, it's not bad looking, but you can tell it's obviously not pure. You can you know the color is actually. Yeah. Nice. Oh, Zenith, very nice. It's a, it's a, that's a GE. GE, in the back. yeah. It's like yeah, that's there's there's the. Uh, that's the World's uh, Fair radio. Yeah, it's yeah. a good good looking radio. A little clear uh, grill. Oh, I know whose table this is. <laughs> this this guy is right behind me. Oh, okay. And yeah, he he paints these radios and he refinishes the wood cabinets, and they're they're just drop dead gorgeous. They're almost too nice. Yeah, look at that G. Um, one of our guys, I call Paul Lavoie, does beautiful work too. He's one that was at. Uh... I forget. I forget this guy's last name. He, his uh, first name is Tom. Okay. Hey, this is fantastic work. Tom Hayes. There it is. Hmm. Phone number and everything. There you go. But yes, yeah, interesting. This gold. Uh, I'm not sure who makes this radio, but it's like a gold. Interesting color. Uh, I do like the color. Oh, this is here's a, another interesting radio I've never, never seen before. Got me never seen. West. What's that? It's a half of a May West. <laughs> oh, is that right? It, yeah, yeah, it's a May Sly Cyclops. May Cyclops, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Some sort of Frankenstein or? No, if they, they made them like that. that oh, you know, okay. Not, not the horns. It wasn't meant for the horn speaker, but. Well, this is kind of interesting. Like all these little, like you know, indicator lights. It's oh, it's the the band indicators. Yeah, where we are in a band. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, it's an unusual looking radio. There we go. That looks like part the Motorola. Of the Motorola. 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 Yes. I think Bruce Phillips uh, had one of those. It's a 325. Woo -hoo. I remember, I think he had one. They were really kind of neat. Oh, we were here 39 before. Motorola. Mm -hmm. The S Grill Catalan. 3500. Woo -hoo. Gulp. Oh yeah, okay. We 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 actually were at that. This is not a photo of the table we saw earlier. It's just we didn't. We, this is a different angle because it's yep. like over here. Ah, ah, uh, Wilbur. <laughs> there's uh, now there's vintage. If you want to say vintage, there's vintage. <laughs> He's always zonked out. <laughs> he he has a, a love affair with beer. Oh, just okay. make That's him a bad true. guy. It just makes him really sleepy, though. Sure, uh, yes. to attempt to do that. <laughs> he, he's a he's a PA club member. Oh, okay. okay. So, there is ham equipment of some sort. Yes. Is that over here? Mm. Is that an Emerson? Well, that's a, that's a uh, uh, an Emerson. I thought, I thought it was an Emerson. Oh, okay. They're they're kind of rare. I actually have one of them. They only came in four colors. Okay. 
tubes, lots of tubes. Look at these. These look like these are earlier stuff. Hmm, now what do we have here? Seven and fifty dollars, whatever this may this may be. Let's see, what does it say? Vacuum tube amplifier. Ooh. Ooh. Jack Garrett? Jared? Gerard. Gerard? Oh, okay. Garrett. G G G A R O D. I wonder if it's got the tube. This is unusual there. looking. Yeah. This is a very unusual piece. Oh, this is unusual. Is that the VT4 tube in there? The 211? That's what those two on the end look like. Let's see if I can. Whoop, sorry about that. No, oh, wow. I don't know. Quite the, quite the unusual piece. First time I've ever seen. Let me go back here, by the way. Oh, I can't see. I can't get the resolution. Okay. All right. Well, what do we got here? Radio, radiola. Well, that's an interesting color. And Zenith, of course. You see those fairly commonly. Ah, Philco, missing a knob. Motorola. Crosley? No. That might be okay. Maybe. RCA. I think that's a Crosley, yeah. Fun. Usually you see them with a handle on top. They got the little uh, lucite retractable handle on top. Oh, is that right? The Crosleys do, yeah. Yeah, this one here. Okay, you're saying this should have had one or they may have come. Well, I'm used to seeing them with a handle on top. Maybe, maybe they made one without the handle. I think I think they made some without them, though, Greg. Yeah, I know what you're talking about though. It's like a piece of plexiglass almost. Yeah, it's also like a lucite handle. Yeah. yeah, I seem to remember seeing one. Hmm. Okay. Clock one on the table is generally electric. We all know what they are. The yeah. telecom clock. Ah, yes. Yeah. Well, actually, with General Electric, I'm not sure if they made the wrong clock. I don't remember seeing telecom with a GE. But I could be wrong. Hmm. Ah, silver tone. Oh, here we go. Opportunity knocks. There you go. Right. Take the next photo over. Silver tone. Silver tone. Okay. It is oh, super correct, okay, generally yeah, electric. Look. You made the call. Look at the dial, though, or the uh, clock dial. I see. It, it was all like. Yeah, it's it's very clouded and it's messed up. This is what happens when you play your radio in the bathtub. See? Ah, yeah, yeah. It's a mystery done. clock. Boys and girls, let's be a lesson to you. Yes. RCA Victor. Ah, oh, Westinghouse, that's what this is. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Is this a Euro set? I'm not sure what who makes this. Not ringing a bell. No. That RCA Victor uh, neon sign is interesting. Catches the eye. Backs of radios, I suppose. Backs of people. So it must be a back photo. <laughs> we only want backs. Well, wait a minute. This guy has a. a Let's see here. Ah, of course. Reby. Yes, look at that. Richmond Hill, New York, another part of Queens. And a, is that a Packard Bell? Packard Bell. 
Stationized, stationized tuning. Ah, nice again, radio. All, all the, because they were made in uh, Los Angeles, so they all had K, whatever it is. Right. The, the mm -hmm. Dial. Los so Angeles. Okay, a couple of that happy enough funny. faces. Delco. Not sure on this one. Hmm. Uh, yes, the FM. Uh, FM converge. Converge. Yeah, I see. You see those pretty regularly. Soup tester, I think. Looks like a Philco council without the discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I thought that was that's Calvin and Hobbes. That's hilarious. <laughs> I said that's funny. Calvin and Hobbes. That's okay. That's all right. It's tasteful, and who doesn't like Calvin and Hobbes? Sure. Ah, uh, more ham equipment. Uh, National, I think. Yeah. Well, we all know what that is. Uh, maybe I'm the only one who doesn't. Oh, really? It's an R390A. Oh. <laughs> I can see he's even got powered up. He got the dial lit up. Yeah, I see the lights are on. So, yeah, he's got power. Probably oh, yeah. an R390A. Probably an R three ninety A. R three ninety A, yeah. There was even a guy that had the R three. Uh, I call it the imitation R three ninety A, which was like the, the one that I can't remember the name of the company, but they had a contract with the government in the seventies, to do a run of R three ninety As, and there was one of them there too. And they were all like, you know, just really put together cheap and cheap pieces and crappy tubes and all that. The guy was selling one of them. There's a pile of money. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that back at that. Ooh, 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 ooh. 240. Wow. That's a beautiful piece. The car advertising is interesting. I'm not sure for whom this is, whether it's Cadillac or I like that all these early advertisements. Big band stuff. I'm not sure. What like are, oh wow! Records. Yeah, those are actual picture records. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see the grooves through the photo. Yeah, that's cool. Some cool stuff there. Hmm. Oh, a switchboard. Look at that. And it, another porthole TV. Crazy. Hmm. Pretty there cool. Lily Tomlin impersonation. There you yeah, go. Yeah, I know. Hey, there you go. I'm thinking the same thing. One ringy dingy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what do we got there? I'm even sure. Oh, that's a uh, oil heater. Ah. Oh. I thought of, I was thinking maybe a heater of some sort. That would explain it. Yeah. My wife's got a near mint one that we picked up in Western Pennsylvania. Actually, it's like six feet behind me on the floor here. Oh, okay. Wow. Got a, I got a little I, everything. I, I, got a whole variety of stuff here. You got a Stromberg Carlson there with the mystery dial. Yeah. You just tune a station and guess where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So, okay, we got the Variac. We got the RCA Victor. We got, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know what that I'm is. I'm ringing either. a bell. Yeah, I don't know. Mellow tone transistor. Ooh. There we go. Wow. Oh. Mellow tone transistor radio model. Huh.
Uh, it's an RC. I got a little bit of everything here. Oh, yeah. Good. I forget the model number of that RCA radio, but boy, those are nice sounding radios. That's got a 6V6 in the output. Wow. They made them in plastic and wood. I've got the wood uh, version in it on my workbench downstairs, and boy, does that sound nice. Actually, those all three of those radios are RCAs. Now that I think about it, yeah, I yeah, the other two are AM and FM right there. Yeah, it probably looks a little bit has some cabinet problems, but so, someone went happy with the with dialing around there. <laughs> yeah. I forgot, did these have, like, a, did the ring light up in the outer? I think these do. Yes, right? it did. Well, the, the the ring, that thing with the two pointers going out the side, was basically a, a shield for the dial light, so the dial light could reflect back all the way around. So, you know, at, at, in a dark room, you could see the numbers. Got it. I can remember my folks had those same speakers behind that Zena. Yeah. Well, were, yeah, I remember them. They were like with the circle of sound or yeah, I thought they were the, uh, the the RCA. Was it RCA that made those? They're gonna be from the seventies or I think I think Zenith made those. Oh, maybe Zenith. Ah, okay. Now there, that's a uh, a super radio right there. That's, that's either a thought. one or two. That's what I thought. I think that it's a one or two. I can't tell unless I see the the speaker uh, case. Because the first gen had one big speaker, the second gen had two little speakers. Well, I'll, let me get mine. Oh, okay. I'm only one club length of finding it here. This looks like an AMF from radio, but I'm just not sure who makes this. It's intriguing with the with the bar style dial pointers. All right, so here's mine. Whoop. Let me get it in the Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. See, this is the second gen. I think this is the best out of the three, only because it's got the the separate uh, separate high range. Yeah, line. separate tweeter there. Uh huh. But, and the computer. I'm not going to turn it on, but the computer isn't going to give it justice. This also has separate bass and treble. Oh, okay. You can set both of them up. Yeah, that looks nice. That looks like the one to have. Yeah. So this is the big panoramic shot. Or panorama. I think this is definitely Thursday. These are still yeah. Thursday pictures. Yeah, set up. Wow. Somebody did a lot of setup work there. Yeah, I, was, I, I thought I, I saw that guy Saturday, and and that, I thought that was a brilliant idea to put the shelving there to sure display the radios. Radiola, I think. Do I read that right? I believe so. Yeah, looks RCA-ish. Yeah, yes, a little bit. Look, we'll fourteen oh one. Oh, okay. The slide in record player that was all the right. Movie. Some tests, various scopes, European set. Hard to say who, which one this is. Oh, yeah. well, hard to see this one. Philco model twenty in the this back. Might... Oh yeah, yep, yep, yep. Some interesting, unusual stuff. A real, if so let's say, numbers had something four. I think that was their portable back then. Wow, this is unusual. Say 24. Can't get any closer, unfortunately. I, I can't make out the number. Yeah. Something four. If I remember right, I think those had a lid on it. There was an antenna in the lid or something. Kind of an elaborate 
antenna set up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There it is. <laughs> you remember well, Greg. Yeah. That's neat. Quite a neat radio. That goes back to the mid 20s. I think it's like a 24 or something. Or oh, maybe it's maybe it is 24. Really attractive piece. Another radio below it. Similar look style too. Huh. Okay, ah, uh, got the hippo. Now this is the auction room. Ah. Hippo. So the, this is the stuff that was being auctioned off Friday night. Okay. Ooh, there's one of those oriental. Um, yeah. It's nice. Real hand painting on it. Phil, Phil. Some good stuff Phil, here. That, that light green was a Philco too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a lot of good stuff here. Yeah. Let's see the uh, Westinghouse, Westinghouse refrigerator. refrigerator. Yeah. Of course, a TL over here. This, I think, may be a Philips. This Euro, European set might be a Philips. Looks like a tube tester. I got going. It's quite a stash here. Well, that's only one corner of the room. I mean, that, that there's yeah, there's more there. Uh, Philco. Oh. Hmm. That looks familiar. It's, yeah, I can't see it that well anymore. Okay, I can get it. enough resolution. Ooh, is that a silver tone? Looks like it. But it's not. No, it's not. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can't read the script clearly enough. Is that an M. Meissner? Meissner? M. It looks like an M something. M. E. I. or M. A. I. Looks like it's got some push buttons added to it on the left side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that's... Is that... Hmm. An iTube. <laughs> Curious. Was that the way they made Nobody it? Nobody was hot riding on that one. Well, Frankenstein-ish. Hard to say. Yeah. That's probably got a record player in the top. This? I think so. It might be a, a Crosley with the record player. Maybe. That record player. Hard to say. This is this is it's decidedly European. This is decidedly German. I'm not trying to show which one this is. This is early '70s stuff, and I'm not sure who makes this one. Typical German. They love those little. These are the mechanical presets for FM. You can actually pull you dot you turn it in and then you lock it in and then that's your that's your and it shows has a little mechanical window for every one of them press the button it's very popular back then fisher had a receiver that was like that as well one of the one of the uh solid state receivers had that like they called it tunomatic or whatever yeah i have uh they I've, you know that that that, that approach lasted into the 70s. I've got a, a Rank Arena uh, receiver um, that has this, the mechanical FM, you know, uh, uh, presets. I think that was like a late 60s, early 70s thing. I even had a Sony FM stereo multiplex thing. It was just two separate things. It was an amplifier and a, a, a tuner, and the tuner had presets for each one. You just hit a button and bing, 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 bing. And yeah. Lift up the lift up the thing and tune it, and then slap the, the switch back down, and there you are. So that was kind of there. There was a number of different manufacturers that used that. Yeah, it lasted very long though. Kind of went away quick. 
Well, I think over time those things start to break. I mean, because they were, you know, there was highly mechanical, you know, you know, and they probably were over time a little expensive to make, which is easier not to bother. <laughs> Cause that, that 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 pretty much died out by the you know, probably by the mid seventies, late seventies. Yeah. Ah, the weather. This, yeah, that, that had to be either late in the day Thursday or maybe Friday morning. Probably late in the day Thursday. That's why they didn't usually Thursday nights they have a bonfire where they toast right. they, they put a bunch of old radio cabinets and set off fireworks and drink beer and none of that happened Thursday night, I understand. I bet. Looks like you had rain and fog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, back to some good stuff. Oh, here we go. Here's some neat stuff. Is that a climax? I think it is, yeah. 425. That's nice looking. Beautiful. Those were I think like a four tube set with a with a a TRF and they're unfortunately not very good players, but they look nice. Yeah, okay. Fairbanks Morse. Oh yeah. Uh, good looking radio. This is actually nice. I wonder who makes sets. I can't really read it. The label's right there. But it's very attractive. When you look at between the dark, very dark brown, almost black, and then the sort of saddle looking. Very attractive. Is it oh, the, the, rem, the Remler. Remler, thank you. With, with the Scotty dog on. Yeah, exactly. No, oh, an RC, uh, uh, Zenith is that a Zenith? That's a Stuart Warner. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Nice. I haven't seen a Stuart Warner like that too often. Anyway, I have I, one like it, and there was actually two models. One had an eye tube and one didn't. I remember I added the eye tube to mine. I had an Amphenol kit. And there's uh, another... Russian radio, I suppose. Maybe it's the same one we saw earlier. Ah, uh, more test gear. I mean, more ham gear. That, that's that same guy I was talking to you about before. That's, that's more of his stuff. Got it. Oh, okay. This looks like an almost identical picture. I didn't circle back. Yeah, we, we, we saw this already. Yeah. Okay. Now this is done. I'm sorry. Sorry. Why I said. Uh, we, I don't think we saw this one. No. Well, that's from the same guy with the horse. Right. Here's a, a breadboard. I see there are a nine or a ten. I don't know which one that is. At War Kent. Right. Board. There we go. Lots of good stuff here. Wow. Wow, some unusual pieces. I'm not sure who or what this, who makes this one. I don't know what that is either. There's an Emerson here that I recognize. Fada. Fada. At Walter Kent. Yeah. Avon bottle. <laughs> Sorry. Is it Avon bottle? <laughs> oh, yeah. So there you go. Ah, my dad used to get the uh, get that, you know, because he was a teacher at Christmas time. Invariably, he got an Avon. Of course, I liked when they had the car when you got a 56 T Bird. Oh. It was one, and one was a. Uh, Chrysler Town and Country they had too, but the back end would come off. Right. And they also made sort of like a, oh, 30s car. I forget. We had that. My brother painted it up. You know, even though we've had missing a lot of detail, he still painted it because that's what he did. He always made sure he painted things and made them a little bit better. Oh, wait, what do we got back here? <laughs> this is interesting. I think those were those wall mounted radios. Oh, okay. At least one of them. 
bunch of interesting stuff. I don't know even know what this this is back here. It's hard to see with the oops. Ah, the club. Uh, there, there's the club table there. Now, uh, 180 degrees on the other side is where the buy now table is where where the, the vultures line up for the uh, carcasses that show up. Got it. I mean, I saw a guy walking right, walking away Saturday with a, and I saw it at the buyer now table, but I was, I think it was a nine tube uh, uh, shutter dial carcass. And I think it was like, well, stripped. I think the only thing that was left on there was the transformer and maybe not much else. And guy was walking away with it. I'm like, what are you going to do with that? I mean, I guess he needs a transformer. That was all that was left on it. Huh. Yeah. Yep. So, pretty amazing stuff. Filco 90. Yeah. Oh, we got here some. Ah, oh, yes. The uh, FM. FM. Uh, and on a uh, junior. Hmm. That's the sound that's, that's a Belmont. Could be. Uh, silver tone here, I think. I have a neat looking oh, radio. It's on the bottom, yeah. It's actually a neat looking radio. Is that a Crosley here, I think? I said the red is a Crosley. The left one, I. Stuart Warner, I guess. Yeah. Hard to I say. Wrong. I'm not screwed. sure. Looks very familiar. Hmm. All right, here's a bunch of stuff. Now there, there's the, that, that picture there. That's Tom, the, the, the taller guy standing up. Okay. The guy on the right, the right hand side. That's that's his uh, table. Ah, uh, okay. He's what I guess. Here's the GE. Yeah, okay. We're just getting a different angle here. He does yeah. do some interesting colors here, like the silver tone and this sort of violet purple, like purplish color. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, maybe it attracts people, you know, people want something a little bit unusual color wise emerson there silver tone some interesting colors he chooses they're really eye popping mm -hmm. huh oh is that a zenith over there yes indeed yes that's nice Five yeah, S two nine, I think, and there's a nice Atwater Kent. That's John's table, I think. Okay, yeah, I've got that Zenith tombstone. That is a, I think, a five or six tube. Nice looking radio. Nice mm -hmm. woodwork. Nice woodwork there. Oh, not a pan out. More panouts, lots and lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. What do we got here? Oh, it's an airline? Is this an airline? I think that's an airline, yeah. No, it's very, very attractive dial face. Wow, that's that's really quite nice. Another airline, I guess you have. Okay, another airline. Oh, of course, that's a Zenith. H500 Zenith. Yep. There's another Zenith. That's uh, a G730 AM FM. That's a one-year only radio. They only made that for one year. You see, and then they, went, they made a ton of them, though. Oh, yeah. They made millions of those things. Because you see, almost invariably see a show with, with at least one of those. You did a beautiful job, Bob, on that teal you did in one of your videos recently. Oh, I thank you, Greg. I appreciate that. I I, I I put in a full five days on that radio. I believe it. 
for what it's worth, normally this would be just sort of a average photo, but it is a rather uncommon embodied GM car right here, the Oldsmobile that you don't see too oh, yeah. often from the the uh, and the late eighties, late eighties, early nineties. Pretty yeah. haggard looking, but it's it's all there mostly. That's you you'd be surprised to see some of the vehicles that pull up there. There used to be a guy that pulled up there with a '64 Dart, <laughs> and 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 the thing was like, and you know, paint was faded and everything, but it was it was still in really nice shape. I, I had a mm -hmm. I had a Valiant when I was a kid, a '64 Valiant. I had so much rust on that thing, and cobalt treatments wouldn't help that car. Yeah, that's a that's an error where you, you know they basically they were sitting rusting in the showroom floor, you know, and so by the time they got into the real world, that was they were already doomed, you know. But um, actually, this is probably a good point to stop because we we're hit we're at nine o'clock sharp, and. Um, well, this was fun. There's some great photos, um, but uh, we probably I we can finish these off for the next meeting. I think I have one other deck that was shared with me from a different photographer. Um, these I think are are great. Actually, these might be a little bit better, but the other ones had some interesting shots nonetheless. So we'll probably pick this up next meeting, and. Um, and then probably the meeting after that, we'll start working on Brookline. And there's plenty to see there once I get through all my photo cleanup and get them ready on my drive. So, because they're still sitting on my phones or camera. But um, anyway, guys, great having you as always. Pleasure having you. Um, thanks for the great meeting and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys. Uh, I guess it'll be in June. We're hitting the. Hitting the, the middle what i call close to start of summer yeah. anyway guys thanks very much okay. everybody enjoy your memorial day holiday yeah that's right you guys do that have a great time safe time and we will see you guys soon so take care take care good night good night, good night.